Well, hello everybody and welcome to this episode of G-Bears Off-Grid Ways, a homestead in the desert. March 6th, 2020. We're looking up at my PMA, my wind turbine, and that's because I promised I would do a, a video or an episode uh, showing a little bit more detail about uh, wind turbines, uh, PMAs, or PMGs. Now, I've done this before, and I, I did in yesterday's, I posted down in the comment section a couple other uh, videos that I did that were in my playlist uh, on the uh, wind and solar section. And uh, you can go back and look at those two if you uh, miss anything on this one. Okay, what you're looking at up there is called a KT5. Okay, and it's, uh, I purchased it from a company um, called, online called hydrogenappliances.com. Uh, so Hydrogen Appliances, all one word, dot com. And uh, this model was a KT5SCAC12. Okay, so that's a, that means that this is an AC version 12 volt. Now they make them for um, 12, 24, and 48 volts. So you can get whatever one you decide that you're going to work with. I went with the 12 volt because that's what I had on my battery bank system was a 12 volt system. And I could always upgrade later if I wanted to. But uh, this was my first um, trek into the wind and solar. And uh, I learned the hard way because nobody would answer questions for me down the line. And uh, yeah. What, this one here, I'm pretty satisfied with. Uh, this is rated for winds up to 90 miles per hour. And it's a 1,685, that's 1,685 watt alternator on there. It's a three wire system, okay? Now, I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again to remind you that when you're talking about turbines, PMAs or PMGs, it doesn't matter. All turbines are rated for a maximum wind speed and a maximum wattage. And those two go together. So when it says 1,685 watts for this system, you'll only get that in a 90 mile an hour wind. You're not gonna get that in a 25, 30, 40, 50 mile an hour wind. It's gonna be a 90 mile an hour wind. And that's hurricane force. So. That leads me to the next thing, the tower that you use. Now I'm using an inch and a half Schedule 80 black gas pipe. And uh, it's quite heavy and that's 21 feet tall. And uh, you have to fasten that very well. I have three guy wires high and three guard wires about uh, another three to four feet below those to uh, steady that post. Now in a high wind, when you're talking 40, 50, 60 mile an hour winds, there could be up to 2,000 pounds of pressure on that mast. So you want to make sure that you really do a good job of anchoring this thing. Now I have a concrete base on that that's probably, oh I would say, uh, 10 to 600 pounds of concrete holding it to the ground. And the other thing you want to pay, pay attention to is um, you're going to have to do maintenance on it sooner or later. So I designed my pole with a hinged bottom so it can be lowered down uh, to the ground when I have to work on it. Because other than that, I would have to go up with a cherry picker or scaffolding or something like that to work on the top of it. All right, so I, I said this is a PMA. That means that it's a permanent magnet alternator. A PMG is a permanent magnet generator. The difference is an alternator produces AC and that's three wires. The generator produ produces DC, which is two wire. The difference is with a three wire PMA, you're gonna need a rectifier before your batteries to convert the three wire AC to two wire DC. In the generator, the rectifier is built into the alternator up at the top, so you only have two wires coming out. The problem with that is, if you have a problem with that 
rectifier up there, you've got to take the whole system down to get to it to do a repair on it. That's why I went with the three wire because that allowed me to put my rectifier right here down here where it was easily accessed if something goes wrong. I've got a spare, I can pop that one off and I can, hold on a second here, and I can pop the spare on, okay? So you definitely want to make sure you always have a spare a rectifier. Now that rectifier didn't come with a heat sink, but I, when I go through the desert, I find people dumping old TVs, things like that, and I take all of the electronics out of it and I save all the heat sinks. And uh, they come in handy down the line. This one comes with its own heat sink. Although I still wouldn't trust that. I, I don't even trust that one. I have a fan. Uh, this is a CPU fan for a computer blowing on that thing. And I have a switch on there where I can shut it off when the winds aren't blowing. So that I'm not burning extra electricity if electricity gets a little on the short side. But I've never had that problem. Right now, this... This little unit comes off the rectifier and the, uh, the, the rectifier feeds through it and then that goes directly to the batteries, positive and negative. And I put a, a breaker switch in, in the positive side so that if I need to disconnect it from the batteries for any reason, I just flip a switch and it's disconnected. Okay, now these things will put out heat. They will get very hot. So you do want to make sure that you protect them with a heat sink and a fan. Don't just trust the heat sink. Put a fan on there also. All right. Now, if you had a generator up there, you'd only have two wires coming in instead of three like I have here. And I have 50 amp fuses on, or 60 amp fuses on those. Yeah, 60 amp. And uh, that's, the, that's protected for, from over voltage, but uh, it have to be 90 mile an hour winds before I have to worry about that part of it. In the meantime, we've been doing fine. You can see, you'll see the max on here. That's watt hours, that's amps peak, and that's watts peak. So a little over a thousand watts peak is what I've got out of that in the highest winds here. All right, so now, it, three wires come off of the turbine right here, or the PMA, and they go into the, the rectifier and then it comes out in two wire which is a DC voltage or DC current and that goes directly to the battery. If you had a generator you'd have two wires coming in one would be red and one would be black and you just go straight to the battery. You wouldn't use a rectifier here because the rectifier is built in to the alternator up on top and that's why you only have two wires coming down. So I, I prefer to have this down here where I can access it when I need to. And then I put it through this, uh, this little meter so that I could read um, what's happening with it when it's happening. All right. Now, these things will overcharge your batteries because this is not controlled. It's just taking the power that that, uh, that uh, PMA up there makes, running it through here, converting it to DC, and pumping it into the batteries. So you got, I also have solar going into the batteries. So then my solar comes in uh, through right, there's your panels, panels B1 and B2, panels A and B. And uh, anyway, the panels all come into there and then run through different controllers. And that's a uh, uh, HD, uh, MPPT, and this is a PMA or PMW um, controller. So anyway, these are Harbor Freight controllers, so you can have more than one controller, but you have to use them as separate systems. So a certain number of panels um, go in, like panel A, all panel A's go into that, all the panel B's go into that. So that's why they're separated out up here. They're not tied together, because you don't want to cross those together, because basically what happens is, when you buy these things, they're rated for a maximum amount of watts. So you want to uh, not go over that. So if this one's 600 watts uh, on, the, on the MPPT, 
Then the best I can put on that is six panels, six 100 watt panels. On this one, this is say this is a 400. So the best I could put on that is four 100 watt panels. But together, I've got a thousand watts input. And then they feed the, to the batteries and th those, are, those are set and controlled. But for the uh, PMA, you're going to need something to um, regulate the over voltage, which is what's going to happen when you um, peak out your batteries. Uh, those will shut off and quit putting power into the batteries, but this thing won't. This will keep on going. So you connect this to the batteries, and this is a called a dump load controller, and this is PWM, but this is designed together, all one unit. You buy it as it is. And it's got settings inside of it. You'll notice it doesn't have the same type of buttons on it. Like that one has three buttons up there. This one doesn't have buttons on it to where you can change the controls. Inside of this, it's already set up and, and designed for a certain amount of voltage. Once it reaches that, this will automatically click on like this. You'll see the yellow light come on. And that's taking power up, that's go, coming into the batteries right now, and it's sending it up to a heating element. Now you can use uh, any type of heating element you want. You can use light bulbs if you want. It doesn't matter what you use for a load, but you do want to have a load to, to drop some of that um, extra voltage down so that your batteries don't overcharge. And you see up here, I'm at 14.1 and it flashing between 14.1 and 14.2. So between the wind and the solar right now, I've got plenty of electricity. And at 14.2, uh, this, this one here is designed to quit sending power to the batteries. But the uh, wind is still putting power into the batteries. And right now, it's just dropped from 141 watts. So that that's going to overcharge the batteries unless this thing works on it. Now again, put a fan right below that solenoid. That solenoid will get hot if you don't. This is ice cold right now. I could use it to chill a beer. That fan will keep that cool. And what I did was I tied the fan wires directly into these two wires here, which are the ones that activate the solenoid. So when this thing clicks on, like I just did it manually, that automatically turns the fan on. When it clicks off, the fan will shut off. You'll see that come to a stop here in a second. All right, there it is, it's at a stop. So the fan doesn't keep on running all the time. It just, it turns itself on as soon as this thing does and that solenoid is ice cold didn't get hot at all so you don't have to worry about fires then you can pick these up at uh, used computer stores and they're they're very inexpensive um i've got about uh, two dozen of them here that i i bought all before i came out here and i got all different sizes and shapes there's one right there that one in the summertime i connected into uh, these controllers when it gets too hot in here that blows cold air down to my inverter and there's a fan that sucks the air in through that inverter and blows it through and then there's vents here where the, the hot air comes out. So I have another fan over here and this is piped to the outside and what this does is uh, this kicks on also when the voltage gets too, ho too high in the summer and that'll suck hot air out of this room. So those are handy little items to, to remember. You want to do stuff like that. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do is tell you about wiring. Okay, the wiring coming off of your PMA, um, depending on a PMA and PMG, depending on um, what you're running and how far away you are from this location, depends on the size of the wire that you're going to have to use. Okay, now I'm pretty close to mine. I'm, uh, it's only 10 feet behind the cabin and then uh, 22 feet high. So I figure I've got about uh, 35 to 40 feet maximum. 
and 10 gauge wire was fine for that. Now you're going to use PV wire 10 gauge AWG. Okay, so that's uh, AWG stands for American Wire Grade T and 10 gauge means it's uh, the size of it is 10 gauge. That's uh, actually bigger than 12 gauge. As the numbers go down, the wire gets bigger. So you want, it, you want that minimum size wire. Now, if I was running a um, PMG or a generator up there, these wires would probably have to be a 6 or larger. So I, don't, I didn't want to spend that much money on wire, so I went with it this way. Another reason, and besides that and having the rectifier down here easily to access, those two things put together um, just makes more sense doing it this way. All right. So anybody has any questions to that, wants a, uh, me to touch on anything else other than what I've touched on here, uh, you might be able to find some of it in some of my older videos. I'm going to cut this one short now. Um, I'll cut it short. We're at 16 minutes. But I did want to show you how all of that um, comes together. Now, you can see it's the sun is starting to set now, and I'm still at 13.8 here. So I've got plenty of electricity in this battery bank, and I still am six batteries short for my complete battery bank from what I what I actually figured was what I was going to need. That's uh, another thing we'll get into at another time. But if you're wondering about how much you, um, batteries you need and how much solar you need and how much wind power you need, all right, let's put it this way. Your batteries are what's going to carry your load. That's what's going to power everything. So you have to f f size your battery bank to be a very um, adequate size of amp hours and um, watt hours. You want to... All of these batteries have to run everything if there's no sun or wind. So you want to make sure you have enough power for that. Figure that um, all of a sudden it's a, a nasty weather. There's no sun. There's no wind. Your batteries are going to be doing all the work by themselves. So you got to have a good battery bank. I recommend these are the least expensive way to go. These are all forklift batteries, and I bought these brand new, and they were $100 a piece when I got them. Now they're $160 a piece. So, yeah, they're, they're, it's expensive, but you got to remember, these things are what's going to be doing all the work all the time. Your solar panels and your turbines, all those are our battery chargers. They charge the batteries. And then... After the batteries are charged, if you still have sun, you still have wind, the extra electricity they're making helps power everything that you've got. So the batteries aren't doing the work at that time. They get a break. It's, a, it's break time. Take, take 10. Go, go get some coffee. All right. So that's, that's how this system works. Your, your batteries do all of the work. Your solar, your uh, PMAs do all, all of the charging for the batteries. So you want to charge up and have extra when you're uh, doing that. So when you plan everything, first figure how much items you're going to run and how many watts you need to run everything and figure that for the maximum time that you're going to run that in a 24-hour period. Okay, Whatever that wattage comes out to, double that and that's what you want for a battery bank. Because right? that if you can you got to go 24 hours off the batteries you're going to want to be able to do that all right now when i did it i went three times what i needed and another item um, before i forget another item you want to get is one of these okay this is a bls 12n this is for a 12 volt system and there's a little light on the front of it right there. It's a little light is on. And you just hook that to the positive and negative terminals of the battery bank. And what that does, it's, a, it's an anti-sulfating uh, system. And the military has been using these for years. They swear by them. They'll give you 10 times 
the life cycle of your batteries if you're using lead acid batteries. And they make those for the 12, 24s and 48 volt systems. So go online, get yourself a BLS battery lifesaver and uh, hook that into your battery banks if you're using lead acid. They, they are definitely the way to go. When I upgrade this system, uh, when these batteries are all uh, done and all gone, I'll recycle all of these batteries and I'm going with forklift, uh, used forklift batteries. A used forklift battery, a single battery, used forklift battery, will power a house for 30 years if you want. So you're going to pay more for it in the, in the get-go, but hey, it's a used battery and it's going to go 30 years. What do you care? And if you want more than that, go with a brand new one. Expensive. And you're going to need something to move it because you're not going to pick it up and carry it. They're heavy duty batteries. They require special lifts just to move them around. But uh, yeah, forklift battery is much better. But uh, next in line, I would say golf cart batteries. They're designed to take a load and charge quickly. And that's what you want in a battery. Automotive batteries, not good. Stay away from them. Okay. I'm not going to get into all the other different batteries that are out there. Everybody has their own taste of what they want to do. But for expense wise, lead acid and forklift batteries are the, are the best to go. Second in line would be golf cart batteries. All right, everybody. That's G Bear reminding you give me a thumbs up down there. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't. G Bear signing off.